So you're in these spaces where you're helping people in these very vulnerable moments. You're creating a safe space for them. You're holding space for them. And what the vulnerability is around creating a family, right? It's about this vision for what we want our family lives to look like and the gap between what it should look like in our heads and what it actually looked like. Can you talk to me a little bit about how you define family, what family means to you? What does this word mean? I love that. Obviously, there's like your family that you're born with, right? But I think that even more so now, it's the family that you choose. It's the people that you choose to be around you that you call family. I have so many friends who I consider family, stronger bonds almost than some of my blood relatives. So I think that it's cool. Like we're in a cool time right now, societally, about family can be whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be X, Y, and Z. It can be people who you work with or people that you meet on Instagram that have become your best friends. It can be someone you meet through an interview and then you keep in touch. Like it's, I just, I think it's to me, the more the merrier. (laughs) I love that I do have my blood relatives and all that stuff, but it's, it's also very cool to have family that I feel has been put into my life for a certain reason or chosen And then on the flip side, I think it's cool too to be able to like weed out the people. And this happens probably as you get older, like totally realizing people that are taking up your space and your bandwidth that aren't giving you as much as you're giving them or aren't maybe the right fit anymore. So I think that that's cool too, is that you can change family as your life goes on. It's depending on what you're going through. Yeah. It can be like a little jellyfish, like it can move and reform in new ways. Love that. Yeah, exactly. And so we're talking about what family means to you now at a moment in time when you can look back on the biological family you've created and it's come, it's been shaped in the way you wanted it. When you were in the moment of yearning for your son so badly that your marriage was on the rocks and you were going through fertility treatments. Do you recall what your vision of family was that you were holding on to and trying for at the time? Yeah, I I really wanted to feel like my heart was complete, if mm-hmm. that makes any sense. And I it, just felt... Yes, it does. I talked about that guttural feeling where I was just like, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I just feel like there's another... I don't know if it's like a soul or whatever you believe in, but I just felt like I needed, there was this other kid that needed us to be its parents. I don't know. It was just like a feeling. And I believe in, I'm I'm like, believe in like spirituality and signs and the universe and all that stuff. I'm not religious per se, but I do believe in that kind of stuff. And I felt my heart was telling me something that I really needed to listen to. Hi, I hope you love this little excerpt of Storked, the podcast where we talk about all things family building and families. This was a little taste of the bigger episode. We call it a Storked Munchkin. If you love what you heard, I highly encourage you to check out the full episode wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also find it on the Storked website at storkdpodcast.com. If you're in the process of building your own family or exploring what family means to you and you want to stay up to date on all relevant topics related Related to family building. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. It's called Let's Start a Family and it is found on Substack. Happy listening.